Hello viewers, now welcome to the second season of another exciting episode of Because I Want To Be... I Will Become which is brought to you by the Rebecca Foundation, the Mac Foundation, and the Ghana Education Service. Now, as you know, this program is tailored for young ladies and young women. And so in the spirit of collaborations and partnerships, we're urging our young boys and men to support us. Let's get talking about today's subject. Um, you can do so also on our social media handles. Let's get talking and, and make this episode a great one. And so today we will be looking at personal health. So, so important. And of course, I'm not here alone. I'm here with uh, a lovely ladies here who are gonna introduce themselves, starting from my left. Um, Aida Armia Ahmed from Halid Bun Walid Islamic Basic School in Abeka. So then we have Aida and then... Inshua Sewa Asante, a pupil of St. Charles Luanga RC Basic. Welcome Inshua. I am Precious Asha Newman, a Form 3 student of Little Saint School. Precious, nice. I go by name Mami Atunibwa, a student of Abeka 2 Basic School. Mami, ah, thank you, thank you, thank you ladies for coming and as, as you heard me say, today we're looking at personal health. It's such an important subject. Uh, most of the time we focus on all other things than ourselves and so today we're going to delve into that and we share some experiences and of course we'll also be joined later on by our resource person for the day and, and so we can wait. For, for her to come in here. And so together, get ready, people. Um, we'll be right back after this short break um, as we delve into personal health for today's episode. See you. Personal health, hygiene, and grooming. In this video, we will learn the importance of staying well-groomed and maintaining personal hygiene. We will also learn some grooming essentials and see what happens when we fail to maintain our appearance. Proper grooming and personal hygiene are essential to promoting good health. Habits such as washing your hands, bathing and brushing teeth may all sound too basic and monotonous, but they hold plenty of importance in keeping you healthy and warding off illnesses. They also help you feel good about yourself and create a positive impression on others. Before we look at some ways to stay healthy and hygienic, let's understand what is meant by personal hygiene. Personal hygiene involves taking care of our bodily health and well-being through cleanliness. It means that you bathe using soap and water every day and shampoo your hair regularly. Check your hair for any signs of lice and dandruff and use a medicated shampoo if necessary. When it comes to grooming, always wear clean and washed undergarments, clean and ironed clothes, and a fresh pair of socks every day. Sweaty clothes or smelly socks bother other people around you and also cause breeding of germs. Always remember to clean or polish your shoes. You must also brush your teeth twice a day and floss once a day to avoid gum problems. Change your toothbrush every three months and use a good quality toothpaste. Use natural mouth fresheners like green cardamom or fennel seeds to keep bad breath in check. It's also very important to keep your nails clean and trimmed at all times. Dirt can easily accumulate beneath long nails and cause bacteria to breed. Dirty nails not only look terrible, but can cause food poisoning and other diseases too. Another very important thing to do is to wash your hands with soap and water before and after eating food, after using the toilet, and after coughing or sneezing. It's a good idea to keep a hand sanitizer handy for when soap and water are not available. Let's look at a scenario to understand the importance of good personal hygiene and grooming. Sam has recently joined a retail store in the sales department. He notices that customers approach him for queries, but they appear uncomfortable and then go to the next counter. Because of this, Sam's sales are suffering. He approaches his friend Chris for advice. Chris, I am quite worried about not being able to make any sales. Customers come to me, but then they quickly go away without making a purchase. I think I know what the problem is. 
Um, apparently you haven't been paying attention to grooming and hygiene. What do you mean? See, you haven't shaved for many days, and it looks like you need a shower. Your body odour could be turning customers away. Um, actually, I had been keeping busy the last few days and didn't have time to take a bath. Well, if you don't shower or wear sweaty clothes, everyone can smell it, even from a distance, Sam. But what can I do if I sweat a lot and end up smelling even if I take a bath? You can use deodorant on your armpits every day after you shower, Sam. But remember to not use too much because the fragrance then gets too much and can make other people uncomfortable. Oh, I didn't know that. Anyhow, now that you have seen how your lack of grooming and hygiene is affecting your work, you must promise yourself to take care of it. Thank you, Chris. Sam learned his lesson and made it a priority to brush his teeth properly, bathe regularly, wear clean clothes and keep his beard trimmed. Soon, customers started coming to his counter as well and his sales picked up. Both men and women must make efforts to appear well-groomed, clean and presentable at all times. Men should shave or trim their beard regularly and women should get any awkward body and facial hair removed. Now, along with maintaining personal hygiene, it's important to keep your surroundings clean. This means that you should always flush after using the toilet and never spit on the road or in any open area. Finally, maintain a healthy lifestyle. Make sure you eat a healthy, balanced diet and include enough green vegetables and fruit in your diet. Drink at least 8 to 10 glasses of water, exercise at least 4 times a week and go for a jog or run every day. Remember, it takes only a little time to appear well-groomed and stay fit and healthy. But the rewards of doing this are many. Your mind and body will thank you for making the effort and so will others around you. Hello there again. Welcome from the break. Remember, it is because I want to be... I will become... Brought to you by the Rebecca Foundation, the Mac Foundation, and the Ghana Education Service. Great. So, as we said earlier, today we're looking at personal health. Now, health is such an important thing for us all. In fact, health is wealth, they say. And, you know, we can become or be anything that we want to be once, as long as we're healthy. Am I right? Yeah, you exactly. Are. Now, I just want you to share with us and with viewers at home and I hope that you have your pens and parts ready to jot down something and when we hear personal health what comes to mind what are some of your concerns about personal health you have personal experiences um, what comes to mind can you share with us so personal Precious. health is yeah. the complete well-being of the mind and the body so taking care of your body and as well as your mind. You see, in Ghana, mostly we, when we hear personal health, we are always thinking about our body, but we don't think about setting time for leisure, mm. you know, to relax and mm. have some time away from work, right. just to get our mind off things and just have fun. Now, that is so important, you know, because in our world today, there's so much to do. I mean, young people, if we're not even resting, we're on social media doing, you know, A, B, and C, and, and realize that we don't have enough time to rest. And our body needs that, as you just said. It's not just our body, but our minds as well. And so that's a key, key, key important note. Mamiya. Okay, so to me, personal health is the mental and physical well-being of an individual. Okay. We are talking about individuals, personal. Okay. Normally, when we are talking about personal health, we focus mainly on the physical aspect. Mm -hmm. But we should note that the mental aspect is also very crucial. Very, very because, crucial. Because, excuse me to say, if you are not mentally okay, it affects the physical body too. That's so right. we should know that. Thank you very much, Mamiya, for that. So. Let me ask, um, Inshira, if I, if I should, what are some of the things that you do at home that you know helps with your personal health? Okay, so if you want to be healthy, you need to um, exercise your body daily. Does that mean that you exercise? I don't really, <laughs> but don't I do. So, so this advice to yourself as well as the people. Uh, myself as an example. Okay. And also eating a balanced 
diet mm -hmm. and also vegetables and fruit. Even if you're not a vegetarian, mm -hmm. you have to learn to eat vegetables. Like that's why there, you know, because sometimes the fufu and the banku is too much. Yeah, you know? some <laughs> people they think, oh, me, uh -huh. I'm not a vegetarian, so know, vegetables. So but vegetables, yeah. It's really healthy and it helps you have a sound mind. That's right. And I'm taking from your cue vegetables and fruits as well. You know, sometimes we do not take some of these things, but it helps in our health and our development. So that is very, very key. I like I like that point. Um, Aida. You have to be bathing twice daily, mm -hmm. combing the hair, mm -hmm. brushing the teeth twice daily, and even maybe in the afternoon at 12 p.m. if you are feeling like maybe heat you can just go and wash up ah, I, that point that point is just you know making me feel at home because bathing twice a day most times you know especially our brothers back home are, are guilty of that and some of our sisters too so we need to bath twice a day make sure and sometimes as i just said you know our weather in Ghana, in Africa, is very, very hot. And so we get, we get lots of sweating and we need to wash that out, you know, so that we're fresh. Those are very, very good points made. Because I want to be... I will become. Yes, we will become whatever that we want to be. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we've started with delving into personal health. And we'll be right back after this break. We're going to introduce you to our resource person for the day. And see you in a bit. At the Rebecca Foundation, we focus on the well-being of Ghanaians, especially women and children. Welcome back. It's still because I want to be. I will become. Brought to you by the Rebecca Foundation, the MEC Foundation, and the Ghana Education Service. So we're still talking about personal health. And as I promised, we're joined by a resource person now. She's no other than Audrey Sewa Bonso, who is a registered pharmacist with over a decade of professional experience, meaning we are in safe hands. Well, She's worked with great companies, pharmaceutical companies like NS Chemist, Unicom Chemist, Equity Pharmacy. She also has her own pharmaceutical consultancy called the ASB Health Consult. But what excites me even much more is the fact that she's passionate about social health related issues and loves to mentor and support young ladies like those we have in our studio today. And so we want to say a big welcome to you, Madam Audrey. It's, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you. So, Sister Madam Audrey, personal health, when we say personal health, what, what are we talking about? Personal health, just as the word means, personal, that means it has to do with us as individuals and our health, taking charge of our health. In our health, we are talking about our general well-being, both physical health, our mental health, our social health, our intellectual health, and even our spiritual health. So it's taking charge of everything about us in entirety. Great. Now, ladies, do you have questions for Madam Audrey? Are there any concerns or are things that you do, you've always wanted to ask? Auntie, so when it comes to self-medication, let's say you go to a pharmacy, they prescribe a drug for a particular sickness, let's say headache. 
but on the package you see it's written for headache and general body pains and next week you have a back pain and you take that same medicine is this substance abuse okay so then that means you're taking the medicine that is in the house or you went back to the pharmacy to take the medicine you didn't go back to the pharmacy okay that's the definition of substance abuse taking medication without the prescription or without any form of instruction from an expert. That's what we call substance abuse. Uh -huh. We are young and whenever we are in doubt or we need anything, let's ask people that's like our parents or the experts. But first awesome. of all, I mean, within our jurisdiction, we ask our parents mm -hmm. and our parents, based on their knowledge, we say, let's go to the pharmacy or let's go to the hospital, but not on your own as young girls because you don't know what's going on internally. You don't know the specific dosage you have to take here and there. Thank you very much. So that means that we should always seek advice and not just, you know, become, you know, doctors and nurses <laughs> in, our <laughs> in our homes. homes. <laughs> yeah. Inshira, any question for our resource person? Is drug abuse and self-medication, are they the same? Interesting. <laughs> yes. So I think we can say that interchangeably, that self-medication leads to substance abuse. So the more you self-medicate, or any time you decide to self-medicate, you are abusing the substance. And so in this case, the substance here is the drug, and so, or the medication. So any time you are going to take the paracetamol that a pharmacist hasn't told you what to use it for, and on your own you decide to take it, that is substance abuse. Do you remember, I am abusing the substance. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just want to find out from you, um, what are some of the personal stories, experiences that you've had related to personal health? Okay, so there was this girl in my class. She just mishandled herself anyhow. She didn't actually pay close attention to her personal hygiene. And it got to a point she had body odor. But we as her friends, we didn't know how to like come out and tell her that she has body odor. So we consulted our female teacher. And she came to us to talk to the whole class about personal health and hygiene. And she took that, the lesson she learned from it, and now she's better. That's a good one there, you know, because, yeah, I understand what you mean by that, because I'm like, it's very sensitive to tell your friend, or maybe, because maybe they might take offense. Maybe they have a bad order, you don't want to say, but it's good that you, you reported it, you talked to the teacher, and she also found a way of talking about it. So that, that's a good thing, that's the way we help each other. And so that's a good point there. That's a good point there. And just to add on, so as young ladies growing up, very soon, I don't know if some of you have even started having your period. Because of that, it comes with some form of order. Mm. And that means you would have to take double care and extra care compared to our brothers or our siblings that are male or younger than us. So once you start experiencing some of these hormonal changes, it comes with sweating more, mm -hmm. it comes with you know, your period, and that gives an order. And so you have to make sure that you take more care of yourself mm -hmm. compared to your brothers or your younger siblings. That's something I need to add. Well noted, well noted. And our friends are back home as well and siblings are also learning as, as we are. Aida, were we actually washing our hands pretty well before COVID came in? Or oh, now that COVID has come, we're learning to wash our hands more? Mm, we are learning. You think so? Aida, what, what do you have to say about that? Before COVID came, we are not washing our hands like today. today. Mm. But because people want to prevent themselves from getting the virus, they would always wash their hands every 20 minutes using sanitizer. They're washing their hands. They are even spotted. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Ishira, one thing that I also discovered is that it looks as if because we're in the age of sanitizers, I mean, sanitizers have always been there, but now it's like, you know, and it looks like people are replacing sanitizers with the traditional washing mm -hmm. of hands. Do you think that's a good thing, Nishira? I don't think it's a good thing. And many people, um, they do that because if I want to speak the truth, some are afraid of water. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Some people, they, like, when they touch the water, they start running. 
So they think the sanitizer is good rather than go to the tap and wash. And the sanitizer too, they see it, it's easy. You don't have to walk, it's just in my bag, so I'll pick it. So it's like, it's laziness. It's laziness. Ah, thank you, you said that. Laziness is causing us to, you know, avoid the traditional way of washing with our hands. But even, you know, from, from what I hear, um, or do you correct me if I'm wrong, is that even when you apply your sanitizer, you need to still wash your, well, why is that? Isn't that enough? The sanitizer is more supplementary. It adds on to giving you another layer of protection. But then the fundamental one is washing your hands because with the soap and the water, it's able to, you know, that's why we said running water because then it's washing away, the soap will break down any barriers and then the running water will wash down any germs that are stuck in any part of our, you know, hands. So then the sanitizer then will give you another layer of protection. So we just do the sanitizer. Sometimes you let the germs still stuck on. Some will die, some will just go, but then the germs are still stuck on your hands. So please, the hand washing, sanitizers do not replace the hand washing. Yeah. And we're doing it so well during COVID. Yeah. And yeah, so I think that we can just continue the habit. <laughs> because work. during the COVID time, I mean, they recorded very low cases of cholera because we were washing our hands. And so then, now it's coming back, of course, because we have... <laughs> so please, the sanitizer does not, does not replace hand washing. So, take it as our new life now, you know, doing it periodically, uh, do not replace um, traditional hand washing. With sanitizers, uh, so that we stay healthy all the time. What are some of the things that you're taking away from today's episode? I've learned how to take care of yourself, and how to prevent self-medication. Okay, so self-medication, that's one thing that we touched on. Uh, we just don't go for any medication, just because we had a headache today and tomorrow we have another pain somewhere, we go back to the same medication without, you know, going to the pharmacies to find out whether it's the right thing to take. Mamiya. Okay, so before that, I'd like to share a story. Oh, okay, quick. Okay, so I heard this from a man. Mm -hmm. And during his early childhood, he had an accident. And unfortunately for him, his head got locked in the car seat. So they had to forcefully pull it out. Mm -hmm. So because of that, um, he was left with a permanent injury. Every two hours, he would start having pains in his neck. So because of that, he bought aspirin. Mm -hmm. And then he'll be taking it every two hours without the knowledge of his parents. So growing up at the age of 50 something, he died last year. He had um, lung problems. When he went to see the doctor, the doctor told him it was because of what he was doing during his childhood. He said he did that for eight years. Every two hours, he take two aspirins. I was generally shocked because self-medication can be very harmful. That's as right. the man narrated before he died, he said he had lung problems and it eventually killed him. Final stage. That, that's really, really, really sad. But um, it's, it's a lesson for us all back at home as well, that we should not self-medicate. You know, we should seek advice and go to the right persons to help us um, and advice. That's very, very educative. Um, so what are some of the things that, you know, going back to your, your schools, back, going back to home, what are some of the things that you would want to change or see, um, you know, happen in your home as far as personal health is concerned? So I would like to set some time away from learning, to have some time of my own to relax, make myself feel good. Feel good is part of it, you know, as a resource person said, uh, feeling good is part of it. And so making time to rest, which is very, very important. You know, um, young people of today, we don't have time. Everything, there's something always to do. We're not doing anything, we're on social media, so there's no time for rest, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Social media mm -hmm. is taking the brain power as well. And so when you're talking about rest, you're talking about sleeping. Mm. You're talking about just relaxing, going for a stroll, or reading something that is not stimulating in the mind. Because yeah. the social media is taking all your time, mm -hmm. and then it's also actively, you know, getting you involved both mentally, and that's no rest. That's and so right. please, social media, Resting is not necessarily away from your books. Mm -hmm. but social media is also part of a part that you don't have to, you know, 
fully commit to. Ah, so that's for you, those who are addicted to social <laughs> media. <laughs> that's a message right there for you that it's important that we really rest and rest without having anything distracting us or engaging our minds um, because even our minds need to rest. Personally, for me, this episode had really sort of reminded me about things that I should, I should, you know, keep in mind and keep doing. And I, I'm sure that all of you as well. And we're not just going to keep this information to ourselves. When we go back home, make sure that we put into practice, um, you know, encourage our, our, our friends, our school as well to do same so that together we have a healthy society growing up together. Thank you so much, ladies for coming and, and particularly thank you so much um, Sister Audrey for sharing your expertise on, on this subject oh, and sure. the information that we've gathered here into good use. People back at home um, is still because I want to be I will become. Well as always you know we have some activity coming your way and so stay tuned as we delve into that and we'll be right back. Princess are from. You are welcome to White Tooth Dental Clinic. And this is the dental education. Okay. So we're starting with brushing technique, which I think is very important. So you should brush twice daily. First in the morning after breakfast and in the evening after you've done with your supper and everything and you're just about to go to bed. So to brush your teeth, I always say you should have soft bristles. Okay, so with your soft bristles, you should brush in what? Circles. Okay, it shouldn't be like that. You get it. It should be in circles. Protect the gums. The gum supports the teeth. So you should brush in what? Circles. Do the same at the back as well. And the chewing surfaces. You should brush the chewing surfaces very well. You can count 10 on each quadrant. Okay. Brush the chewing surfaces, okay? Don't forget the tongue in the middle, okay? Brush the tongue, trust it out and brush the tongue, okay? With your tongue scraper or the brush itself, okay? Then, I said after all this, you should be brushing twice daily. First thing in the morning after breakfast and the last thing just before you go to bed. When you brush, it should be the last thing, but you should know that after brushing, you are brushing the surfaces, so the bacteria is equally smart. It hides in between the teeth where the brush cannot reach. That's why the same vein we promote flossing. Okay, so this is a thread, that's a floss, a nylon thread. You hook it like that and go in between the teeth to remove the food particles that are hidden in between the teeth. Then you brush, okay? Then again, you should also visit the dentist twice a year, six monthly interval. So when you go, the dentist is going to remove plaque. Plaque is the number one cause of bad breath, people call halitosis. So the dentist will remove and check for any uh, abnormalities, any hole in the enamel, caries. If the caries is in the enamel, you won't know. During the cleaning, the dentist will detect that. The teeth has three layers. The enamel being the strongest layer. When the cavity is within the enamel, it is easier to fill. And it's easier and cheaper because it's small. And the place, but when it goes beyond and goes through the dentine into the pulp, then you, you are landing into root canal treatments, which can be very expensive. Okay, so you are better off going for your six monthly checkup 
so that if there are any problems or uh, any cavities in the enamel, it's quickly treated before the caries goes any further. Okay, so the six monthly checkup and possible cleaning with the dentist is very important. Okay. I always say dental is cheaper when you go early. Okay. All right. Please, what is the plaque? The plaque is the yellow thick thing behind the lower front teeth. It's food particles mixed with bacteria, very hard. Okay, so your ordinary brushing cannot remove it. So when you go to the dentist, that plaque is removed. Take yellow, even when you look at people's teeth, sometimes when you talk to them, if you look in between, you'll catch it. You'll see some yellow thing in between the teeth. If you look round these days, you'll see it. Is it obligatory to pull in your teeth after you've removed them? Yes, you have to. After you've extracted your teeth, you have to replace them. The replacements are very expensive. Before you think of the expensive ones, at least face the denture. Denture, the only problem is the evening removal when you are just about to sleep. But it, it, it saves the jaw, else your jaw will cave in and affect your beauty structure. Do you hear your friends at home and to the viewers? Our advice, you visit the dentist twice in a year, every six months. After doing this six months, you go for the plaque removal and the dentist again checks for any problems that are coming in the mouth. Sometimes it goes unnoticed, but when the dentist, if you go for your six months, the dentist detects it and solves it at an early stage. Like I said, when the caries is in the enamel, it's cheaper and faster to treat than if it gets to the pulp. And you should also avoid fights at school and actions that will fracture, that could damage your front teeth. I've told you it's the dentist's prayer. So you've got to take care of yourselves at school and to reduce the sugary foods, the fizzy drinks. It also damages the teeth really fast. So for your age and to yourself, your friends, I tell them if your friend is chewing something, be careful, it can damage your teeth, okay? There you have it, welcome back. And those who are young girls in activity, that was very educative. And you can also try that at home or in school. Well, people, my name is Ajit Yanane. Still, because I want to be... I will become. All too soon, we've come to the end of another episode. Next week, we'll come your way with another exciting episode. So look out for the next episode. It's going to be exciting as usual. Uh, make sure that you are going ahead with the talk personal health keep talking join us on our social media handles as you see on your screens you can also email your stories to us and we'll give it some personal touch so stay healthy as always we'll see you next week for another episode take care